As those of you know who tune into my channel, cyber criminals, bad actors, scam artists just piss me off. And that's why I horn this channel and that's why I do what I do. Surprisingly, we have to ask ourselves a question now based on some new research. Is there a link between mass corporate layoffs and the exponentially growing number of data breaches that are occurring nationwide, worldwide? And a study that was conducted by the University of New York College and presented at the Pacific Asia Conference on Informational Systems suggests there is. And if their findings are correct, this is a wake-up call for companies in terms of their practices, in terms of how they handle layoffs, in terms of how they teach and train their staff members. So let's go through the data, let's talk about what the findings indicate and where it leads us in terms of next steps together. This is an appeal to corporate leaders because the decisions you're making around the corporate culture you create and the cost cutting measures that you implement to meet your quarterly profit expectations may be costing you millions to billions. Let's start with the data around the workforce. In 2022 alone, 4 million Americans resigned from their jobs per month, every month on the year. 48 million, that's a significant portion of the entire US workforce. And according to Gallup's research, an additional 50% who did not actively resign participated in what was called quiet quitting, where they just kind of unplugged themselves. Um, so it's important to pay attention to this from an environmental perspective, and it will lead us to some of the other things we'll talk about. With the exception of years 2000 through 2004, worker productivity has been in steady decline since 1960. And it's estimated that this lost productivity on a global basis costs employers approximately $7.8 trillion per year. Final thing I'll mention on corporate culture leading into uh, some of the other things we'll talk about is according to Gallup research, 60% of all employees surveyed are emotionally disconnected from their jobs. Now, why do all these statistics matter and what do they have to do with data breaches? Let's talk about that now. Let's talk about the threat. In 2023 alone, 3,205 data breaches occurred in the US. That is an average of 8.8 .8 per day, every day for 365 days. That is a 78% increase over 2022. And it's found to have affected 353 million people with an average cost per incident of $9.48 million. Now, what does employee satisfaction, quiet quitting, emotional disconnection from jobs, and mass layoffs, what does that all have to do with cyber criminals and the increase we're seeing of 78% year over year in data breaches? Well, if the University of New York's research is correct, which I think it is, we're gonna talk about that next. If it's correct, there is a direct correlation and something that requires immediate awareness and action on the part of corporation. Threats and rumors of layoffs actual layoffs, emotionally disconnected employees, disgruntled employees, all face added stress and job insecurity, which increases the likelihood of careless to reckless behavior. Do you know the leading cause of data breaches? Take a moment and just kind of formulate a guess in your mind, and then I'll tell you. Human error is, is between 52 and 88% of all data breaches are the result of human error, which encompasses accidental to intentional. From security errors made by folks who are just untrained and don't know that they're making a mistake through intentional sabotage and revenge. Think about a staff member who has been loyal to a company for 10 or 20 years. They have all the email addresses of key decision makers across the organization. They likely have private, even secret information stored on their computer, spreadsheets, projections, P&Ls, uh, whatever that might look like. And whether accidental, 
or purposeful. Just imagine the damage that can be done by one compromised employee in this equation. Social engineering tactics are used in approximately 98% of all cyber attacks and are a factor in 70% of all data breach attacks. And these include phishing, bishing, smishing, CEO fraud, baiting, pretexting, tailgating, quid pro quo, fake job offer opportunities. There is just a proliferation of techniques and they're ever evolving. To give you an example of the, the threat environment, a Hong Kong based company recently announced, and it's a global organization, recently announced that they lost $25 million. Here's what occurred. They had a CEO fraudulent first phishing email message go out. And the employee who um, was the only one compromised in the entire organization and who caused the loss of this $25 million said, I was suspicious at first when I got the email, but subsequent emails convinced me that this may be legitimate enough to join a meeting. So in one of the emails, he was invited to a video conference. In that video conference, he saw familiar faces. The CEO, the CFO of the company, the C-suite executives were all represented in this video conference call that he attended. At the end of the call, it was requested that he go to, go to several different banking institutions and forward those monies to different banks that um, the CFO provided him a list for. And it was only after he'd done so and after that $25 million was sent that the organi organization realized that this was a deep fake video scam. The entire C-suite that attended that video meeting was all created by AI and none of them were actually in attendance. But it was so convincing that this employee who had seen them, who watched their videos, who heard them on conference calls, truly believed that this was his executive team giving him a directive to send these monies. And it resulted in a $25 million loss. Now consider this. As of July 23rd, 2024, 254 companies alone were responsible for displacing, for laying off over 60,000 employees. And the roster includes Google, TikTok, Tesla, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, Cisco, Walmart, Peloton, and the list goes on and on and on. And in each of these cases, and those future predictions towards layoff this year, there represents a significant security risk for these companies. And then if we peel the onion back a layer deeper, even if layoffs aren't announced, the likelihood is that if 60% of the entire U.S. workforce feels emotionally disconnected from their jobs, there are vulnerabilities that abound across not just the organizations laying off employees, but those organizations who are keeping staff, but not creating the right kinds of cultures to make that staff loyal to them and not necessarily training them in what's the evolving cybersecurity threat that organizations are facing today. Think about this. 59% of all US-based companies have shortages in their IT and cybersecurity teams. And on a global scale, 26% of all global organizations lack formal cybersecurity training. So put all that together, employee dissatisfaction, threat of layoffs, employees being disconnected, quiet quitting, lack of IT professionals within organizations, lack of formal cybersecurity training. Is there a connection between all of those things? I think I've made a persuasive argument that it is. So now let's think about, as a company, regardless of your size, what steps can you take and what can you do? Now let's talk about solutions. And we'll start with the easiest of all to implement, and that is upping the knowledge of your staff members in terms of cybersecurity practices. And while there are many very good companies out there providing these services, I'm very familiar with Know Before. And Know Before was founded by a former hacker. It's become now what they call a white hat hacker. And they have developed and provide comprehensive courses for your staff members. 
had a you know cost around a dollar twenty per seat per month on an annual basis for a small company, 25 to 50 employees, 18 to 25 dollars per year per staff member. Referencing the 9.48 million dollars lost in the data breach, isn't that a wise investment and an easy one to make? So consider that for your organization. On the more difficult side of the equation, having a cyber transition plan in place for when and how transitioning employees gain and lose access to sensitive corporate data is extremely important. Because once rumors begin to swirl about a layoff, is that the time to really evaluate what's happening on the computers? Um, when an employee is aware that they're being laid off and they're given a transition time, does that put your company more at risk? Either because they're disconnected knowing that they're going to be losing their job soon or they're vengeful and purposely want to sabotage the company before they go. All those risks can occur and having a well thought, well planned strategy for mitigating the risks of these types of situations is super important. Finally, probably the hardest to implement of all is creating the right kind of corporate culture where each and every employee genuinely cares about the well-being, not just of the other staff that they work with, but the health of the organization itself. And even if it requires that their job be replaced, that they understand why the move is being made and it's done empathetically and they're given, you know, good walking away monies in terms of severance that will help them get started. Maybe they're given resources and how to find other roles, whatever that might look like. Having those caring, empathetic, and by the way, correct and only approaches to those types of transitional situations is going to lessen the likelihood that a disgruntled or inattentive employee is going to put your information at risk. C-suite executives, I hope you've learned something and I hope it's caught your attention, it's ignited your imagination, and it'll give you the opportunity to talk to your IT team to develop some outside resources all of which can protect your company from the significant risk from the 8.8 .8 daily data breaches that are successfully um, occurring in the United States every day of the year. And that number, oh, by the way, is only increasing. So if you got something from this episode, I hope you'll click the thumbs up button. I hope you'll share it with others who can benefit from this information. If you haven't done so already, I hope you'll subscribe. My name is Philip Macko. I'm a five-time published author and host of the Muddy Waters podcast and YouTube series. I want to thank you for joining me. Hope I can see you on a future episode. Have an excellent day.